Hey there everyone, it's Chad Pavel here. Today we're gonna to talk about business acquisitions and show you the top five ways to finance your business acquisition. So, just to make sure you're in the right place, this is for first time business owners. Maybe you're sitting at home wondering about how to start a business. Maybe you already have a day job and you're thinking about acquiring a business. This is for established business owners. You either want to buy another business, to buy one of your competitors, enter a new market, or uh, or to just expand your current operations. Perhaps you're a hopeful entrepreneur. Again, you're still trying to figure it out, but you think that business acquisition or buying a business of your dreams is the way to get started and it totally can be. Basically, this is for anyone who wants to buy a business, including those who want to buy commercial real estate as well, whether it's your own building, whether you're buying the building that you currently rent, or if you want to get this in, into your portfolio and turn commercial real estate into your career. So first, please subscribe, hit the button below, hit the thumbs up, we'll always come out with new content. If you leave a comment, I'll always be the first to respond and make sure that you get the answers you need. So first, let's take a look at the seller note. That is the first way to finance a business acquisition. So this is really common with small business acquisitions where basically the seller gives you, the buyer, a loan for an agreed upon purchase price or a portion of the total purchase price. Sometimes it's 20% that they'll give you, you might get 50%. I've even seen 100% seller financing in the form of a seller note. So just know that this is only one of the top five ways to finance a business, but it's very, very popular in small businesses to actually have the current seller effectively grant you a loan or a note of the purchase price. So the way it works is let's say you agree that the business is worth $1 million. You'll come up with your own, let's say $200,000 in cash, or maybe it's a bank loan, or maybe it's some other form of equity or asset contribution. And maybe the seller will finance 80% of that $1 million. Effectively, they'll give you a loan for $800,000 if you then contribute the remaining $200,000. Now, the terms are very flexible. Most of the time, it's treated just like a note or a bank loan where you actually pay the seller back with principal and interest on a fixed monthly fee. There are other flexible terms as well that we'll get into in the next slide. Uh, now, just be aware that if you if you also take out a bank loan, like an SBA loan, or if you go to get some other type of financing from a traditional bank, you need to make both parties aware of the other. Because let's say that you uh, you get approved for a five hundred thousand dollar bank loan, but you also need to come up with uh, five hundred thousand dollars in additional financing. If the seller gives you that five hundred thousand on the same terms or even more preferable terms than the bank who's giving you the loan, you're probably gonna run into trouble because you owe the bank a fixed monthly fee, you owe the seller a fixed monthly fee, and you need to know that you can first pay off the, both of those loans and you need to make both parties comfortable with the fact that you're taking on additional debt. Because the last thing you wanna get into is having two big monthly payments and not being able to either pay yourself enough, not being able to run the business properly, not being able to pay back either party because that could resolve or, or that could end with you having to give the business back to the seller or you actually defaulting on your loan. None of those scenarios are good for anybody in any way. So make sure that you know what you're doing when you take out a seller note. Number two, commission-based financing. Very popular way to do it. So this is also very common in small business acquisitions. And it's really best if you're unsure about the short-term profits or the short-term growth, uh, especially if you are buying a business and you're calling it a turnaround. If it's an underperforming business, the last thing you probably want is a fixed $6,000 per month bank loan on that business. And it might even be a completely unbankable business because it's been underperforming. So with this pay for performance model, it's very common. This is where you would make an agreement with the seller to effectively pay them back over time, but not on a fixed monthly schedule like you would with a seller note, but also maybe it's more like a commission or a percentage of sales or profits or gross margin or some metric that can be, uh, that is hard coded to the numbers that come in every single month, but you still leave yourself plenty of operating cash flow to support the growth and the operations of the business. So the paper for performance model is very flexible. You can set it up as 3% of sales for the first year and then 5% thereafter paid monthly or paid quarterly or paid annually. There's, there's so many different ways that you can actually structure this commission or performance-based financing. And again, it's a really good way to, to help you get the deal done, but also show the seller that you're committed, but also have the seller still maintain some skin in the game. Because if you do not perform, they will not get paid back as quickly, or they may never get paid back, depending on how you structure the agreement. So make sure that you know what you're doing once again, and that you have a very good forecast of the future numbers of the business. Number three, private investors. So private investors, 
have been around forever. And we're talking about uh, small and large acquisitions, old, old businesses, startups, huge businesses, small businesses. Really doesn't matter. Private investors are everywhere. And this ranges from you know, your neighbor next door who has a little bit of capital to organized angel or, inv or private investor groups to private equity groups, which are formalized management companies who typically manage the money of other people and institutions to buy, improve, and sell companies. So private investors, think of them like angels, maybe sort of like VCs, um, in the sense that they're providing typically equity or, um, or debt into your deal. And if you do that, you obviously need to have relationships with these types of people, with high net individuals or institutions, but it's very, very common. And it's often structured in various ways. They might come in as either common stockholders, maybe preferred stock or debt of a number of different varieties. They might provide a lot of credit or also commission-based financing. So private investors, I will say they could be more flexible in the sense that they probably don't have a typical bank underwriting process. Obviously, if you're a proven entrepreneur and you can you can run the business and they're confident in it, then that could be good enough to actually get them to invest in your business. You obviously need to show them the financials, the forecast, and once again, show them you know what you're doing. But private investors can be a great way for you to obtain acquisition financing. It's more flexible. Also beware though of dilution if you're starting to sell equity in your business. They might want board seats, they might want ultimate control over the business, but even if you don't buy the entire business yourself, even if you only own, let's say 20% of the business and your investors put in 80, there are still plenty of ways for you to make money by running the business and increasing the value to them. So private investors, whether they're individuals or institutions, can be a hugely successful way for you to acquire one or even a dozen businesses. Number four is traditional bank loans. Now, a lot of business acquisitions are bankable. A lot of them are not. So this is certainly one of the most common methods of acquisition financing, which is a bank loan. And really what it consists of is either senior secured loans, which are, you know, which are fixed term loans, typically with a very high preference, meaning they get paid first. Uh, there are SBA loans, which are often senior secured as well but they're also backed by the US government. There are real estate loans, lines of credit, leases, equipment financing. Just think of all the products that banks offer. Now, if you're really good, you're really skilled, you're really talented, and you have the right opportunity, it's possible that you can get, what I see typically 90% of the purchase price of the business financed by a bank. That might be typically an SBA loan, depending on the size and the nature and your personal credit profile, but a bank loan can absolutely be a great way for you to finance a business acquisition. So it usually requires, though, some sort of personal guarantee from you, the buyer, meaning the business takes on the debt, but you personally guarantee that if the business defaults and cannot pay the loan, you individually will pay that loan back. So you got to be careful about that. That may also require a down payment or an equity injection. It's very common. Uh, good credit score, personal or business. You know, they might require some co-signers if you have a rather weak financial profile. But generally, if you're going to be buying a business, you need to have a very high credit score in the mid 700s and plus. You can't have so much personal debt loaded onto your credit profile. You need to get that down to a favorable ratio and you need to have a little bit of cash, a little bit of skin in the game. If you don't have all those things, you can typically get by with a very strong co-signer who's got a 750, 800 score or a high net worth or some assets to inject as collateral or to, uh, to be used as collateral. And obviously with bank loans and any bank product, you want to form a good relationship with the bank from day one. You want to pay your loans back on time. You want them to come back and actually offer you more financing. But in the end, you do not want to miss a payment. If you miss a payment, that's a black mark on your profile. And if you obviously default on the loan, they can take the assets of the business. And if you pledged collateral, personal collateral to secure the loan, you might have to give up your house or your vacation home or your stocks and bonds. So be very, very careful that if you do take a term or senior secured bank loan, that you know the type of collateral and you know the terms and conditions. The last thing you wanna do is take out a big loan, have the business fail, or have things pop up that are out of your control that put you into financial distress and then not be able to pay the loan back. But when used properly, bank leverage, bank loans can be a huge way for you to get a lot of financing very cheaply with just an interest rate payment then uh, much more uh, affordable or less expensive than it is to sell a bunch of equity if you want to sell the company. And finally, number five, the 401k ROPS or rollover for business startup. Now, this has been around for 20 or 30 years. It's a very popular way to do it, but not so many people know about it. So 
in the right circumstance, if you have a substantial amount of assets in your company's retirement plan if you, from your previous employer, you can actually invest that cash into your new company. You can pull it out of the stock and bond market and you can invest into your own company. And you can start a company with that cash. You can buy a company with that cash. You can buy real estate with that cash. There are a number of different things that you can do as long as it's a qualified business purpose. Now, there are some restrictions and, you know, there becomes a certain point where it's not worth it if you don't have enough in the bank. But one of our partners recommends you have at least $50,000 in your account, in your retirement account, to consider rolling it over into a new C-Corp and into a new 401k plan. Uh, but if you do and if you can qualify and it makes sense for you, you want to get that cash out of the public markets and invest in yourself and your own ventures, this could be a great way to do it. We see a lot of entrepreneurs successfully rolling over uh, their uh, their retirement funds into their own plan investing in their own firms so that actually does it those are the top five ways to finance a business acquisition hopefully you've learned something new hopefully you're out there and this gives you some more energy to go out there and find the right deal to acquire please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet we're coming out with more content good luck and we'll see you soon